Do the risk factors in the community differ, all comers, from the risk factors that we see in the hospital? Are, I mean, you were mentioning that there are people in the community who get C. diff with no antibiotics. How does that figure in all of this? Yeah, I mean, I think some, again, I think when we're thinking about the, you know, you've got those people that are having a recent hospitalization that get C. diff onset in the community, and, and that's kind of what Dale was talking about, where probably some of that is where it's the same population as the hospital, but we're pushing them out the door a little quicker, so, so it's community onset. But, and and those, the risk factors for those people are the same as people who are in the hospital. So if someone with diarrhea who's recently been hospitalized, they should be you know, treated, um, you know, tested as if they were someone who was still in the hospital, even up to three months um, after discharge. But with those people that are truly in the community have not been hospitalized in the last three months, you know, the, you know, definitely the studies have shown that, that the, the prevalence of antibiotic exposure amongst those people is about 70% or so, versus with the hospital onset, those people recently being discharged from the hospital, it's more in the 90, 95 plus percent range. So some of it is, is there probably is a lower prevalence of antibiotic exposure, but sometimes it's, there might be some recall bias and that all the studies depended on the person saying yes, oh, they were asked, were you on an antibiotic? And they had to know that they were on an antibiotic. And, and you know, I, I always recall a story, um, actually, that, that Stu Johnson told me once of, of when he, I think it was when he was a fellow or a junior faculty member up at uh, uh, the University of Minnesota. There's an elderly person came in with bad C. diff, was admitted to the hospital, denied antibiotic exposures, but he recently had, had you know, pulled his back or something, so took some pain medicines that his wife had in, in the cabinet. So, so Dr. Johnson asked the wife to bring the pain medicine in, and, and do you want to know what the name of the pain medicine was? Antibiotic A, B, or C. Amoxicillin. <laughs> so, so some of it is there's some recall bias, but but I think the other thing is that is actually C. difficile is actually a ubiquitous organism. You know, again, Dale said that C. diff is all over the hospital. It's not all, all over the hospital. It's all over the entire planet. It's been cultured. It's in soil. It's been cultured from animals. It's been cultured from food. You're just as likely to culture C. diff from the home of someone who's otherwise healthy as you are from a hospital room that does not have a patient with C. diff in it. Is there such a thing as an asymptomatic carrier, someone who's shedding C. diff at a higher rate than somebody else and in whose presence you would be more likely to get this disease? Well, we would think Absolutely. that uh, there are probably more asymptomatic carriers than people who are sick. And there's some, some work that was done by, by Dale and others who actually show that there is good correlation. Maybe Dale should talk about his work about admissions and being in a hospital and being asymptomatic carrier. Yeah, the, um, the biggest risk group would be infants who are under the age of two years old. They have a very high frequency of asymptomatic carriage of C. diff. And there's actually been an association in community disease with having an infant in your household. Is that because their flora changes as they grow older? And they are uh, developing their microbiota, and so they're sampling everything around them, and they bring in these organisms and check them out, and they, they colonize their gut for a month or so, and then they boot them out if they don't <laughs> like them. Uh, uh, presumably, uh, they don't like C. diff because they keep changing organisms, and that uh, they don't get sick, which is still somewhat of a mystery best theory is that they have not got mature receptors for the toxin as yet. Okay. That's not been but, studied but, though, has it, Dale? That's been done in rabbits, but, but not and in it's shown people. in rabbits? Yes, it's been shown that they lack the receptor maturity, uh, but that's as far as we've gotten. So um, others uh, are asymptomatic carriers as well, especially in the hospital where actually far more patients pick up C. diff in the hospital and are asymptomatic than actually get sick with it. And, and, is it, and isn't it true that if you treat an asymptomatic carrier uh, with antibiotics, you actually increase their, car their shedding rate of the organism and actually may precipitate clinical disease? You, you can do that, but in, we tried it. <laughs> we thought that uh, treating asymptomatic it's carriers It's hard to might, recruit patients for that stuff. No. <laughs> well, we thought that it might be a good idea to stop them from being carriers or asymptomatic colonized patients, so we tried metronidazole, we tried vancomycin, and we tried a placebo. Uh, well, metronidazole and the placebo were both completely ineffective. Um, uh, largely because metronidazole is so well absorbed in the absence of diarrhea that nothing gets in the stool. Vancomycin did knock out the C. diff and it went away, but all those vancomycin patients essentially got recolonized again following vancomycin. And one of them 
had a non-toxigenic strain in the stool, lost it, and picked up a toxigenic strain and became sick. Lovely. And so we, Lovely. We, uh, we thought that it was a really bad idea to do this, and, and we've not done it anymore since. So. And what about foodborne strains? Well, foodborne uh, illness has never been documented for C. diff, although the contamination of food is certainly there at low levels. So root vegetables, lettuce, um, meats of a variety of kinds, all have low-level spore contamination. The, the uh, contamination, if, if I'm not mistaken, uh, for certain uh, foods, like uh, chorizo, is about 40%. And the food that is the highest of all is a food called Braunschweig, which is a type of pork sausage that is spreadable. It's liver. Oh. It's, it's like a pork Braunschweig. Braunschweig. But I must say that you know the food um, connection is interesting. We talked about exposure to antibiotics, um, and so I'm taking us just for a second a step backwards. Um, you know, you can document exposure to antibiotics, but no exposure to antibiotics is not something you can, you can document. And it is important to remember that a lot of the chicken and, and, and sure. meat that we, we consume um, uh, received antibiotics, particularly here in this country. And what are the concentrations is, is debatable and what is the effect on the flora, uh, but we seem to be exposed to antibiotics on a, right. on a constant.